yes, tonight. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Great Thank to you. see all of you. Uh, this uh, message looks at a lot of the scriptures that are in the New Testament that talk about masters and slaves. And we could easily just overlook those verses and say they're irrelevant to us today in the modern world, Western world, uh, hundreds of years later that we don't have masters and slaves. But you also have to remember that God's word is eternal and it's unchanging. Amen. And so it has significance when you apply it to his kingdom and the spiritual realm. And so that's really important. So let's, let's first of all, just think about the slaves in the time the Bible was written in the first century uh, with the first century church. And one of the groups of people that were really attracted to Christ were the slaves. And uh, Rome, the Roman Empire, had a large portion of slaves uh, in that nation and in that empire. And uh, when they heard the message about Jesus, that really touched their hearts and many of them became Christians. And so when you look at the early church, a very uh, large percentage of those people were slaves. And so the, the people who were writing letters and, and instructing the church at that time, they had to address all of those issues. And they had to talk about slaves. They had to talk about masters. And, uh, and we might say, well, it's just irrelevant to us, but it's not. It is eternal and unchanging words. And so when we realize it from that, uh, it, from that perspective, we need to look and see how it applies to us uh, today. And we could easily say, well, uh, there was just a way, a practical way of dealing with the situation uh, in, in that time. But the Bible is never just practical. It's much more than that. Amen. Amen. Uh, and so you had slaves. The thing about slaves is that they had no rights. And so their body belonged to the master, whoever owned them. That's, and, and so women uh, or men could be slow, uh, sold into, pros into prostitution. They had no rights and just... Uh, if, if there were some, let's say a woman was going to be sold into prostitution as a slave, she, she, there was no, no recourse for her. There was nothing else that she could do. Uh, and so uh, if you were bought, bought to be a slave, then you were a slave. Your children would be slaves. Your grandchildren would be slaves. They were owned and everything you had would be owned by the master. And they had no rights. Okay, so now let's fast forward this to our time. We're going to see that uh, Jesus has set us free mm -hmm. and uh, we're not slaves. Uh, and, and that's what we're, we start with. We're, we're not slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's interesting because we're the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And amen, so, amen. so we are free. I want you to read Galatians. Galatians 5, 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Okay. Now, Jesus taught something here in uh, John chapter 12, and I really want us to go into this. 13. Uh, I'm sorry, John 13. Uh, it's really interesting. It's, this is, if you can remember, uh, when he washed his servants, slit, uh, his disciples' feet. Okay, and so after uh, supper, he put the towel around his body and he got some water and he went around from uh, disciple to disciple, uh, washing their feet. And I'm going to read it. I want you to read it first out of the New uh, King James. But what I want us to really pick up on uh, is there's a change in verse 13 and verse 14. And, and uh, when we get to those, I want, want to emphasize what that change was. And the word uh, teacher, and so first it talks about teacher and Lord, teacher and Lord. Now, a, 
uh, a beloved word for teacher is master. So they would take, uh, if, uh, if you had a teacher, uh, you might call your teacher, you might call that person master. Okay, and so that's just a uh, an endearment, a term of endearment. And, uh, <clears throat> and then there's the word Lord. But Lord is also master. Now, the reason the Lord is master is because he possesses the person. He possesses the slave. Now, when we think about Jesus as Lord, uh, it's just kind of another term. It's another term for uh, he's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our he, he's, and, and we don't really think about what the significance of it is um, until you look at what Jesus described here in John 13, and he's talking about masters and slaves. And so I want you to look at this, mm -hmm. read these verses, and we're going to we're going to look at them in detail in a moment. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garments and sat down, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. And then in verse 14. Okay. But notice the the order that they said. They called him teacher and then Lord. But he's fixing to change things around. That was verse 13. <clears throat> okay. We want to welcome Wendy. Good morning. <laughs> it's so exciting to have you, you guys from China. Okay. It says, if I then your Lord and teacher. Okay. So. They called him teacher first and secondly, Lord. And he says, I'm your Lord, Lord first and then teacher. And that applies to all of us. He is, yes, certainly he's our teacher. Yes. But Lord comes first. That That is mm -hmm. a higher term mm -hmm. than teacher. And so they've called him teacher and then Lord. And he says, I'm Lord and teacher. Okay, go ahead. Have washed your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is okay. not greater than his master. Okay. So this servant, the word servant here, really, when you look at it in the Greek, is doulos, doulos, and it means slave. So the slave is not above the master. It's not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Okay, so these are words that come directly out of Jesus's mouth. He's talking about masters and slaves. Now we don't we don't see it here. There's these two words, two Greek words, where our present day English Bible, they use the word Lord. But if you look at the Greek on it, it's really master, one who owns a person. And then the word mm -hmm. that we use servant, it's really in the Greek, it's slave. Now, it, it comes up better in another translation in the message. I want Sherry to go through this again. And so I'm just setting some foundation here, setting some foundation that Jesus himself talked about masters and slaves. Okay. Then he said, <clears throat> do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher and master and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher... Okay, here it comes again. See, he's saying master uh, first. That's the one. Right, right. I'm the one who owned you. I, I bought you. Mm. I per purchased you with a price. And I am your teacher. So he, he gets things in order. Okay, go ahead. So if I, the master and teacher, washed your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I've laid down a pattern for you. What have I done? What have have done what I've done, you will do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked 
above his master. Now that's the Greek word, slave. Mm -hmm. It's not above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. Okay. So I wanted to establish as a foundation that Jesus talked about himself as the master and his disciples as slaves. Okay. And of course, that's not the end of the story. So we'll have to develop it. <laughs> But this is yeah, stay uh, with us. Stay this with is us. an important message for all of us. We have to mm -hmm. make a decision. And I believe that tonight it's important for us to make a decision. Yeah. Are we going what is our real relationship with Jesus? Do we just call him teacher or uh healer, a provider? What or do we call him master? Let's let's look at this. Now, let's look at what Paul said. <clears throat> Paul described himself as a slave. Yes, well, he yes. was a Roman citizen. Yes. This is important to understand. Paul was a Roman citizen, and he was a slave to no one. But look what he said in Romans 1, verse 1. It says, I, Paul, am a devoted slave of Jesus Christ. What translation is that? This is the message. Okay. On assignment, authorized as an apostle to proclaim God's words and acts. I write this letter to all the believers in Rome, God's friends. Okay. So the point I want to make here is that Paul, Paul was a Roman citizen, a slave to no one, but he made a choice. He chose to, to be, a be a slave to Christ. Uh, mm -hmm. Just be paying, thinking about that. What is your role, role to Jesus Christ? How do you see yourself relating to Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Now, in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, Jesus, to, uh, Paul told us to follow him, imitate him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you he to says, read this. imitate me. Just as I imitate Christ. Okay, so what did he do? He made himself, he's a free man, yeah. but he made himself, himself a, a slave. slave to Christ. And he now, he's saying, you imitate me. In another translation, he says, be a follower, follower of me. my example. Do what I do. What did he do? He chose, oh, he chose. to be a slave to Christ. Mm, now, I want mm, to look mm, at the Virgin Mary. And uh, you know the story from uh, Luke chapter 1, but I want you to see something perhaps in the new light uh, tonight because we know the angel came to Mary and said, you are uh, blessed and highly favored and the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you and you're going to have a son. He's going to be the son of God. Uh, but I want us to read this passage because it, it shows us Mary's attitude some choices that Mary had made. <clears throat> then Mary yeah. said to the angel, How can this be since I have known no man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, all things are possible. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Then in verse 38, then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant, and that word in the Greek is doule, which is a female slave. slave. Mary said, here I am. am. I am the female slave. slave. My body, <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. My body, and basically this is what she's saying. My body is not my own. Whatever the master says, that's what will happen to me. She mm -hmm. calls herself a slave. Okay. okay. Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be unto me according 
to your word and the angel departed from her. Okay, so remember, a slave has no right over their body. They have no rights. They have no right over their body. If they are going to be prostituted, they're going to be prostituted. They have no rights. And she saw herself as a slave. This really puts uh, a different light on Mary in my eyes. I, I, it really shows that she was fully devoted uh, and, mm -hmm. and recognizing, oh, I don't have any rights. If this is what you're saying to me, let it happen. Just mm -hmm. yeah, according to your word. Just according to uh, your word. Hallelujah. Okay. So now for believers, let's think about, this is mm -hmm. for you and me. We've looked at, we've looked at Jesus's words. He's talking about master, the, he's the master. And he also talks about his disciples as slaves. He calls them slaves. Mm -hmm. Now, and then we looked at Paul. He chose to be a slave. Mm -hmm. When we looked at Mary, she chose to be, to be a, a slave. slave. And now let's look at believers. And this is for you and me. We're going to look at Romans chapter 6 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6. These verses apply to you and me. And so I want you to read from Romans 6. Okay, and this also is where we were slaves to sin, and now we're slaves to God. To God. So, oh, oh, we're still slaves. Yeah. Well, we were slaves to sin. Now we're, we're going to be slaves, slaves to, God. to God. Let's read it. What? Romans 6, verses 15 through 22. I just want to pray right now. Father, I thank you for this word penetrating, penetrating, go <laughs> beyond our natural minds. Lord, penetrate our hearts with this message. Let it go down deep inside of us. Let it be uh, a, a message that we will think on and meditate on and do uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Romans 6, 15 through 22. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you know? that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves to obey, whether it's to sin or unto righteousness, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked through you are slaves of sin Yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, hallelujah, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of the flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves, to uncleanliness and ungodliness and lawlessness, leading more to more lawlessness. Now, listen to this. Now present your bodies or your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Hallelujah. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The wages of sin is death. But now having been set free, hallelujah, from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit we're to be, to be producing fruit. Remember, we're ordained to bring forth much fruit. Hallelujah. That's in John. And having become slaves of God, you have your fruit unto holiness and to the end, everlasting life. Okay. Hallelujah. This, this is a profound passage yes, right here yes, in Romans. Yes, yes, it is. We were a, sin, a slave to sin. sin. Now we are a slave to righteousness. See, there's nothing in between. There's no no in between. No 
uh, area where we can just walk on our own, do whatever we want to. We were a slave to sin. Now we're the slave to righteousness Hallelujah. unto holiness. And that's who you are. That's who we all are. And so, yes, we've been made free, but we are slaves to righteousness unto holiness. Okay, now let's, here's another passage uses some different words, but it's the same concept in 1 Corinthians 6. I want just a short passage mm -hmm. here. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who, you know, and I want to stop right here. And this is not just um, your eating habits or what kind of diet you have or whether you smoke cigarettes or don't smoke cigarettes or uh, whether you do other things to, to harm your body. This, this means right here that completely everything, our thinking, our, uh, it, it belongs to the Lord. Are, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? So, so this is really an expression, another way of looking at that we are slaves. Okay, go ahead. You have from God and you are not your own. You're not your own. That's a slave. A slave is not your own. You've been purchased with a price. You so, know, and, and that is exactly what Jesus said to me when I parked <clears throat> behind that little Methodist church. And the, I had the pills in my pocket, and I had a cup of water, and and I was going to take those pills and commit suicide. And then I heard a voice that was sitting as close to me as uh, Brother Fred is sitting right now, and he said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Well, I'm I'm going to come and be with you, Jesus." And he said, no, you're not. Don't you know that you're not your own? That I purchased you with my blood. Oh. Those were his exact words to me. Then he told me to pour out the pills, pour out the water, and go home and do what he had called me to do. So he's called. This is all of us. This is speaking to all of us. Hallelujah. What? Our bodies are not our own. And that's everything we have. It's not our own. We've been purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. I know, but what I was going to say just a moment ago, and that was, and I started out by talking about the diet, but, but hear me when I say this. When you put your body through stressful situations, uh -oh. <laughs> when you overwork yourself, when you overthink and overwork your mind and when you get so involved in something that you're, you're so tired that you can't even sleep at night, then you're hurting your body. You're hurting your body. And your body is not your own. And your body is not your own. I don't know about you, but that pierced my heart right there. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. Yeah, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, in your spirit, which belong to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what do you know? We are slaves. We yes. are slaves to God. Everything we think about, everything we do. Amen. It, uh, we, we can't even, like Sherry said, we can't, it's, not appropriate for us to be, oh, we're oppressed, we're depressed, we're mm -hmm. all kind of emotions. We're anxious. And, and, no, no. We belong. We have no rights. We belong to Christ. We Amen. have been purchased by his precious Hallelujah. blood. Hallelujah. And we ought to follow the Bible because in the natural, there may not be slaves, but in the kingdom, we are, have been purchased with a great price, and we are slaves, okay? Go ahead. Colossians 3.22. Okay, now these are instructions. These were instructions to the first church, but they apply to us today. But we'll look at uh, first instructions to slaves, and then we'll look, uh, continuing in Colossians, we'll look at just simple verses about instructions to masters okay 
All right. Colossians 3.22 says, Servants, in everything obey those who are your masters on earth, not only with external service as those who merely please people, but with the sincerity of their heart because of your fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so what does that mean for us? It means we serve the Lord, not just with uh, superficial things, but at the heart, with sincerity of the heart, because the Lord is our master. He's Hallelujah. purchased us Hallelujah. with his blood. Okay, now here is a verse about instructions for the masters. Colossians 4. <clears throat> <clears throat> masters, on your part, deal with your slaves justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Okay, we... You and I have a master in heaven, Hallelujah. and he's going to, uh, he's going to, this is how he's going to deal with us. He's going to deal with us justly. He gives us justice, not injustice. That's right. And he operates fairly. Okay. Hallelujah. And so we know how our master, who is in heaven, how he is going to respond. Okay. In John 15, 15, no longer, no. All of us know this scripture right here. No longer do I call you slaves or servants, for a slave does not know what his master is doing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. However, I can't get the paper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. But I have called you friends. Hallelujah. Even though we are slaves to our, our heavenly father, he calls us friends. Hallelujah. For I, all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known unto you. Okay. Hallelujah. Right, so this is Jesus Christ. He's saying, hey, I don't call you slave. I call you friend. Well, that's good. But the issue tonight is what do you call yourself? Do you call yourself no longer a slave? Well, Romans doesn't say that. Uh, First Corinthians didn't say that. It, they still say we're slaves. So in our heart, and, and we have a master in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so in our heart, we need to still consider, and this is it, I'm just laying this out to you uh, tonight to make a decision. Are you going to be a slave to Christ or not? Paul said, I'm a slave to Christ mm -hmm. and you follow what I do. And Mary, the Virgin Mary, she called herself a slave to, not to Christ at that point. She just a slave. She called herself a slave. And, but we are slaves to Christ because we have been purchased with his precious blood, but we have to make a decision in our heart are we going to disobey him? See, it's who you obey. That's who slave. Mm -hmm. That's who mm -hmm. slave you are. Are you going to do what's right, righteousness mm -hmm. and holiness? And if not, then you're not a slave. Okay. So it's either you have. To, it's a heart decision, a decision of your heart that you need to make tonight. That or am I going to be a slave of to Jesus? I'm going to obey him. Uh, obey what he says, follow the spirit or not. That, that's, that's just totally up to you. And I'm not forcing anybody to do anything. I'm just laying it out that a lot of people don't realize there is a choice to be made here. And, and we need to make mm -hmm. it because it will change our life if we realize we have been purchased by the blood of Jesus and we are not our own. We are servants. Mm -hmm not just servants, but we are slaves to righteousness unto holiness. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to, uh, that's the foundation of all of this, I, but I would like to apply it to look at some other verses that are, that are very interesting. And this is, <clears throat> I won't spend a lot of time on it, but we'll go at Colossians chapter one, verse 27. It's the mystery of the gospel is that Christ is within you. Okay, 
So Christ is within you. But that's just a promise. That's just a promise. That's not more than a promise. It's not less than a promise. It is a promise. And there are a lot of promises mm -hmm. that are not fulfilled in our lives. Uh, we want that particular uh, promise to be fulfilled. And it's going to take some prayer in order for us to, to happen. So the promise is that Christ is within us. Now, mm -hmm. remember this. Who is the Christ that's within you? Is he your master Ooh, or is he not? Now, that's a pretty important point. Mm. Okay, so if Christ is within you, we and we see that promise, we need to pray that he come forth in the fullness and the completeness of who mm. he really is as mm. our Lord and Master. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look at Galatians 4, uh, verse 19. And we'll see that even though they had the promise that Christ was within them, Paul said, I'm praying for you again and again for Christ to be fully formed. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. My little children, for whom I labor in birth again, or I travail, my, my several translations say, I travail in, in, childbirth. in, in childbirth again until Christ is formed in you. Okay, so because he, he comes in as a little seed. And so uh, Paul prayed first for them to be born again. They were born again and Christ was immature within them. And now he's praying a second time for the Christians in Galatians who were born again for Christ to be developed fully and come forth as the master and Lord. Mm, so mm, let's look mm. at a couple of other translations. In the Passion Translation, <clears throat> it reads, one will be fully formed in your hearts. And then the Amplified said, until Christ is completely and permanently formed within you. Okay. So that that's all the scriptures we'll look at tonight. But I, I just want to highlight what we've talked about here yeah. tonight. Uh, because it's a decision that each person needs to make. And, and do we want to avoid this area and say, well, he's he's my friend, he's my teacher, uh, but I'm not going to submit to him. That's the real issue. Woo! I'm not going to submit to what he tells me to do. Mm. Am I or am I not? And you have to make that decision sincerely at the heart level. Right. Are you going to serve him and he's your master and Lord? By that, I mean, he has purchased you. You realize that he has purchased you by his uh, precious blood and your body is then no longer your own. Which way are you going to handle it? Which way are you going to go from this day forth? You may not have known before mm -hmm. tonight. You, and you may have just kind of gone your own way and decided uh, this is the way I'm going to live my life. But tonight there is a decision that's laid out there in front of you and you've got to, you've got to confront it and, and make a choice. I'm going to just go on with my life and do what I want to do, or I'm going to yield to Christ as my master and Lord. And that means I'm his slave. I will obey him. I, or I mm. will obey righteousness. I will do what's oh, yeah. right. And that's going to lead me to holiness. Amen. And holiness comes only from the Lord. Amen. You, you, there's not a set of things you can do to be holy. But if you do what's right, and you see yourself as being purchased by his precious blood, you do what's right, righteousness, then that will lead you into holiness because you'll be so connected with the Holy One. That's the only way you get holy. It's not some laws and rules and regulations. Your holiness comes from being with the Holy One. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want you to make a decision tonight. And Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank you for being here. Uh, Thank I, you, Jesus. I, Thank you, Jesus. I, I, great, great. It's great to see all of your faces. I'm going to put back so I can see <clears throat> see your faces here. And um, uh, I'm going to open it up uh, for any comments that anyone would like to make. I'd like to and uh and and i would like to just uh lead you in a in a prayer uh tonight 
uh, that if we can all just pray together and and um, uh, just let your heart agree uh, right now and in Jesus name and so let's just pray together father father just just uh just repeat after me if if you if, if you, you would like yeah, yeah if you would like to uh father father i present myself i present myself a living sacrifice a living sacrifice unto you unto you i desire to be your slave i desire to be your slave i desire to obey you i desire to obey you i forsake the world i forsake the world and look unto holiness and look unto holiness that is my goal that is my goal and i thank you and i thank you for purchasing me for purchasing me with your precious blood with your precious blood i will not ignore i will not ignore and i will not forsake and i will not forsake the cross the cross in jesus name in jesus name Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, this was um, uh, a message that um, well, we've been meditating on it. We've been thinking on it. And it might be that, that you want to, to continue to, to think on it as well. And think about ways that you can serve the Lord. Uh, think about ways that you can be his slave. And, um, and and I know that it says that he calls us friends. And 